Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Nays Pink Bookshelf. My name is Nays Denise, for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video. And today's video, as the title says, is going to be my October TBR. And I'm super, super excited for October. A very ambitious TBR. I have a total of about 25, maybe 26 books. And of those, 18 or 19 of those are going to be physical books. And then seven are going to be ebooks. I am partaking in two book clubs, three read-alongs, five readathons and then i'm also doing becca's bookopoly yet again because i had so much fun doing it in september so yes now the same thing with I, with what i did with september i'm not gonna have any like punishment roles for bookopoly or for not completing my tbr just because i need to read as many books as i can right now because i'm just stressed out with you know the virtual learning and things like that and reading is my escape so i tend to read anywhere from 18 to 22 books a month so i feel like my tbr is definitely manageable for me but we shall see we shall see but um i have everything written out on a piece of paper um because i needed to really just see visually how everything was going to work out with all of these readathons luckily each and every one of my books work for all of the readathons and read-alongs i'm doing so that worked out well um, I'm going to save Bookopoly until the end and I'm going to start off with the book club. So the main book club that I am a part of is the Busy Bee Book Club hosted by Erin over at Booked and Busy. And for the month of October, we are going to be reading Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Morena Garcia. Now, I recently read um, Gods of Jade and Shadow and I loved it so much. I gave it a 4.5 star rating. It was absolutely phenomenal. So I'm super excited to get into this. All that I know is that this is adult horror fantasy and it deals with a young lady named Naomi. Um, she gets a frantic letter from her cousin who's newlywed um and she goes to the house to check up on her cousin and strange things begin to happen with her concerning the house i've heard that the plot twist is very mind-boggling um but i've also heard mixed reviews where some people like it some people don't i'm not big on horror or mystery or thriller books so hopefully i do end up giving this at least a 3.5 four star rating even if it hits a three i will keep it um yeah but i love this cover this cover is everything to me the green background with the maroon dress and the lipstick is i'm, I'm here for it but i'm also going to be reading this for the crusty book club hosted by chanel over at chanel time this is also going to be the book of the month for the book, book club right yeah that's what i just said um so yeah it's a stunning cover i do have a book of the month copy but um i love the colors on here the colors on here are just stunning and everything so i'm super excited to get into this Okay, so then I'm partaking in three read-alongs, and one of them I technically already started in September, but then I put that book on pause to wait till October because I just didn't want to stress myself out trying to have to read this. So I am going to be partaking in the Stormlight Archive, Stormlight Archive read-along, um, and basically they were reading in September, The Way of Kings, October, Words of Radiance, November they were reading... Um, Oathbringer and then December they were going to read The Rhythm of War because The Rhythm of War comes out in November but I decided to stop reading The Way of Kings so I'm just going to pick back up on The Way of Kings um I got about 201 pages into the book right yeah 201 pages in that's about 12 chapters and um, I'm pretty much enjoying it I have been tabbing up my book um as you can see and I pretty much have a grasp on the sort of like main characters there is Shallon, who is a scholar, but she is on a mission, which I was completely shocked about. There's Kaladin, who used to be um, a well-known... He, he was in the army, sort of, um, but now he is kind of a slave. So it's him dealing with that. There is Sil, who is a wind sprint or wind... I think it's like a wind spirit, pretty much. Um, you have Zeth, who I love Zeth. Zeth is bad, like... That prologue that their prologue had me like oh i love death i love him so much um there is a prince that he kind of like gets lost in my mind there's other characters that i know who they are because they they're like rich and wealthy the king and stuff like that but i just don't care for them so um yeah thir uh, 12 chapters and i'm thoroughly enjoying it but it's very slow going so i didn't want to feel like i had to rush myself to read it now i already had this set to read it within 10 days um so I just need to pick back up on this and I'm going to pick back up on this in October. If I do get through this and I really do love it, then I will also pick up Words of Radiance, which I own. But for now, I'm sticking to just reading The Way of Kings for that. So they're going to be in Words of Radiance, but I'm going to be continuing on with this. There is a Discord. I'll leave all that information down below. I have been interacting in a Discord, asking questions because Brandon Sanderson is confusing me in this book so much. But I have thoroughly been enjoying it. Um, so yeah, we have this.
So the next read along I'm doing is the Legacy Read Along or Read A Thon with Life as Monet and Erin from Booked and Busy. I love both of their channels so much. And when I heard that they were going to be doing a read along for this, I figured why not? Because I wanted to read this. I think I have a NetGalley arc of it, um, but then I just haven't read it yet. And I saw the book and the book is massive. Like the book is massive. The book is a lot more bigger than my Brandon Sanderson which makes me kind of scared but it's like 700 pages it's not that long you could definitely read this in about six to seven days maybe five um it is about 768 pages it's not long at all but um we have legacy of ash by matthew ward i know nothing except that this is a military-based fantasy that is it and life has monet swears by this she adores it so much um so for the month of october they're going to be reading legacy of ash and then november when the sequel legacy of still come out they will be reading that i may also partake in that depending on how i feel about this book if i at least give this a four stars i will continue on but yeah i think this is just this is massive okay this is massive compared to brandon sanderson's book this this is huge um let me see if i can just put them on top of one another like can you see this this, this is literally like it could just be the paper quality that they're using but this book is massive but it's also pretty it's really pretty so legacy of ash for that and i'm hoping to enjoy it um i have sort of high hopes but also low hopes because i'm not sure how i'm gonna feel about a military-based fantasy i like my fantasy to have a lot of action and a lot of magic and a lot of drama military-based fantasy i'm not sure how that's gonna work because i think this will this involves like guns and um I'm not sure. I, I don't I don't really know if this has guns or not. I don't mind my fantasies having like knives, swords, and things like that. But when it comes to guns, I just I don't know. So I don't know if this is gonna have guns, like I said. And if it does have guns, hopefully they can pull it off well. But I trust Life as Monet. Um she is a fantasy lover, so I'm going into this with high hopes, but low hopes, if that makes sense. So we have Legacy of Ash. Alright, the last read along I'm doing is yet again. <laughs> with Erin from Book the Busy. I just adore Erin's channel. Um, She is a fantasy lover. I'm a fantasy lover. Um, I love her personality. I love her channel. I love how she describes and talks about books. And this is actually a series I've been wanting to start for the longest time that I've just pushed, put, you know, put off for a while. I do own all of the ebooks, but I've recently just picked up the first book about three or so months ago. Um, so I figured I would join in on this and this is going to be the Will of Time read along with Erin from Booked and Busy and um, for October she is going to be diving into the Eye of the World which is the first book and I'm super excited to get into this. I do have a mass market paperback. I'm hoping mine does not break. I've noticed that with some of my mass market paperbacks specifically my Brandon Sanderson ones they are like the pages are like falling apart which I don't care for. I read mass market paperbacks. I have a whole shelf with them um, but for some reason only my Brandon Sanderson books are like ripping up so they need to figure that out but yeah we have this i love this cover i love the blue with the red foiling on it it's just really really nice and it's simplistic um i could have gone with the floppy paperback but this was cheaper got it from barnes and nobles so yeah we have this Okay, so the next thing I'm going to jump in are the readathons I'm going to be partaking in. So the first one I'm going to do is the Black SFF bingo board uh, for the Black SFF thon, and I'm super excited for this. I did not know this was a thing. It popped up on my YouTube, I believe it was my um, recommended list, and I clicked it, watched it, and it was like sold. I don't remember the YouTuber. I honestly apologize. Click the eye to go to the channel. Um, but yeah, I printed out the bingo board and said, you know what? Why not do it this month? You know, I love my black authors, I love my black characters, and it sounds really good. I love me some fantasy, and there were some fantasy sci-fi books that I really wanted to read from black authors, so I figured this would work out, and it does. So, for the first prompt, it is LGBT plus main character. For that, I'm going to go with Obelisk Gate, The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemison. This is the second book in the Broken Earth trilogy. I read the first book, which is the fifth season, gave that a four-star rating. I adore Essun and um, Alabaster. They are just so cute and adorable. Um, this is LGBT plus rep, of course. Um, Alabaster is bi, and I believe Essun was in a yeah, Essun was in a relationship with two guys. So, um, you have to read the first book to fully understand that there is LGBT plus rep in here. I'm sure it continues on because Alabaster is straight up bi. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to get back into this world. I just don't care for the second person POV. It throws me off, which is why I'm going to listen to the audiobook while I'm reading because 
the audiobook helps me get into the mindset of that second person POV. Once you get into it, I feel like once you get past five chapters, you're good to continue reading without any issues. But I remember when I first read the fifth season, I was like, why is this written like this? Why? There's a purpose behind it and it's really, really good. Really good. But I'm excited to continue on and figure out what happens next for As Soon and Alabaster. Okay, so then the next two prompts I'm going to be using for this book are Social Justice Oriented and Love. Um, and that's going to be A Dream So Dark by L.L. McKinney. This is a sequel to A Blade So Black, right? Yeah. And it's basically an Alice in Wonderland retelling, but in an urban fantasy kind of setting with a black main character cast. And I love it. Alice is spunky. I love her mother. Um, and it's amazing. The Hatter is amazing. Um, and The Black Knight is interesting as well. I'm excited to continue on with it. There are some social injustices mentioned within this book because in Alice's world, the or like the actual like world, there are some issues going on with the black community and the murder of like black kids, teens and things like that. So um, I'm excited to dive back into this world. The next two prompts are going to be God as characters and not set on earth for that. I'm going to go with another N.K. Jemison book and it's going to be The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms. All that I know is that this deals with gods in the sky. That is all. I know nothing else. I've barely heard anything about it. There are good reviews for it, but I don't hear much about it on booktube. And I am determined to own every single book that N.K. Jemison has. Now, this is the first book in the Inheritance Trilogy. I know that you can buy the bind-up of the Inheritance Trilogy and also the bind-up of her duology, but I want the individual books because I absolutely love her writing. Um, so, I, again, I know nothing. I just know that the characters are following gods and it takes place literally in the sky that's all I know they're black characters and that's all I care to know the next two prompts are going to be horror and the group book the group book is going to be the jumbies by Tracy Baptiste and it is middle grade horror I'm not a horror person like at all we don't do horror <laughs> no we don't like I don't like horror at all I try to stay clear of it and I also am not big on mysteries and thrillers or suspenses so I figured this would be a nice way to get into the horror genre by reading the middle grade book um so I'm going to use that for both of those prompts and I know nothing about it, but that it just sounds amazing. So, yeah. All right, so the next prompt is disability rap. Now, I am not sure if this book has disability rap in it. I could have sworn there was. Every time I go to look up this book, I feel like I just, I missed something. So if this book does not have disability rap, I will throw on the screen exactly which book I'm going to read for disability rap. But I believe this one does. I'm going to look it up and find out. I know that there's mental health rap. I don't know about disability though so um if not then the book on the screen that you see is the book i'll be reading and i'll just cut the clip here but if it is if it does contain disability wrapped in the book i'm going to be reading is the sound of stars by alicia dow i think that's how you say her name i apologize if i'm saying it wrong but this is a ya sci-fi dystopian and it's set in new york but instead of um the new yorkers being over themselves they are now ruled by aliens and showing emotion is banned because when the aliens first arrived they uh, saw that the humans had a very strong emotional reaction so you are not allowed to i think partake in to partake in reading the arts um and showing your emotions it's illegal but you have a young girl which i do not remember her name what is her name what is her name you have janelle who they call ellie and then you have morris i call him maurice um but his his name is m0 r r r one s it's, it's, it's on screen but i'm gonna just say maurice because it just makes sense in my head to say maurice so yeah you have them two and they come together i know that there's asexual rep in here there's bisexual rep in here there's mental health rep there is um anxiety rep and I'm, I'm not sure about disability so like i said you might not see this clip if i'm wrong and there might be another book on the screen but if i'm right then this is the book i'll be reading <laughs> The last prompt and the last book I have for the Black SF Epithon Readathon is going to be author not from the US or Canada and I'm going to go with Black Leopard Red Wolf by Marlon James. He is born and raised and um from he's from Jamaica pretty much. So we're gonna go with this. This is adult fantasy. I've heard so many mixed reviews about this book. Um some people love it, some people don't. A lot of people a lot of females dislike how he refers to females in this book and how overly sexualized this book is. I'm going to go into this with no expectations whatsoever. I know that um I think her channel is Read with Toby or Life with Toby. I can't remember. Click the on the screen. She actually enjoyed this book. So um, she typically reads a lot more thrillers, mysteries, and I believe horrors. Um, so because she liked this book and I saw her review on, I think it was on um, Goodreads, I'm going to give this a go. I'm going to give it a go. Hopefully I can get past those issues and like the book. 
at least give it a 3.5 star. If I do not give it a 3.5 star, then I'm going to unhaul it. But hopefully a 3.5 star rating or 4. Um, but yeah, we have this book. So all I know about this book is that this follows a guy named Tracker that has to hunt for a mysterious boy. And I believe he can like shape shift into an animal. Something like that. I don't really know. But I'm going to give it a go um, and hope it goes well. Okay, so now moving on to the next readathon. The next readathon I'm going to be partaking in is the Supernatural Athon. I do have the printout with everything because I just, it's too many prompts. There's 15 prompts on here and it's for the entire month of October. But um, I am so excited for this readathon. Click the eye to go to the channel. I believe the creator has already posted up her um, TBR as well. So just click the eye to go to her TBR. But I am a fan of Supernatural. I have watched all 15 seasons. I was so sad when COVID took place because it kind of like put an abrupt end to season 15 but um i'm excited for it to come back and finish we love the winchester brothers like the winchesters as a whole are just amazing i cassia is literally my favorite um character outside of oh my god what is the little baby angel's name i can never remember his name it's always on the tip of my tongue but the baby angel i call him a baby angel but he's really the son of lucifer him can't remember his name it's on the screen for some reason it's, it's on the tip of my tongue but i can't think of it right now but we love we love him we love him he's pudding pie i was so sad when um you know he got poofed but i'm so glad that he's back so i'm not gonna talk too much about the series if you have not seen supernatural watch it like i love supernatural so much that i even tried to watch the anime version the anime version is it it's a little bit more creepy and a lot more perverted which is why i never finished i don't think i would only watch like two episodes of the anime because it was just too much for me like i love anime but that was way too much but um yeah i'm so excited for this video thought i am a major fan and when i found out that there were 15 prompts and they all have to do with the 15 seasons as well as an episode like the best episode from that season um i was here for it had to do it now i tried so hard to do 15 books one for each prompt but i ended up with 11 books which is perfectly fine um so yeah i'm gonna take a sip of my coffee and we're gonna jump right into it so the first book is actually the group read and the group read is going to be the diviners by love of right now like i said i was going to do 25 books but a possible 26th um this is that possible book i definitely have read the diviners before i can't remember if i gave it a three three point five four star rating don't know um my rating is on the screen i know that i did enjoy it it's a 1920s roaring 20s type of setting um definitely a perfect spooky october read it deals with the spirit realm and um ghosts and things like that i know that i enjoyed it but i'm not sure if i want to read it now or if i want to wait until i have all of the books i do own this book and book two i don't own books three and four yet i have them on ebook form but i just i want physical copies i have read books one and two already and enjoyed them but um yeah my only gripe with this series is that they have freaking changed this cover so many times i felt like every time a new book was released they went through a cover change i do like the final cover change um i do have the second book as a hardcover in the original cover because i picked that up from my local library when they had their book sale so um, i'm gonna look for the other two books in this same cover here um but i did pick this up and i like the pearls and the purple is amazing but i don't know if i'm gonna read this possibly will possibly might not don't know we'll see i'm gonna add it to the cbr and put it towards like the end of the month if i get through all of my other books that i want to get through so like I said, I could read this because that'd be 19 physical books and I definitely can do that. But we shall see. We shall see what I do. But we have the diviners. And this is going to be YA historical. <sighs> I want to say historical fantasy also slash horror because it's a little bit of both. But yeah, we have this. All right. So now on to the actual prompts. And all my book titles are written on the side. So I know which one. So um, the first one is Devil's Trap Symbol on the Cover. Um, and for that, I am going with Matthew Ward's Legacy of Ash. There is a symbol on the cover. I'm pretty sure this symbol has to do with the military. It's all on the cover. Like, it's on the cover, it's on the spine, and it's also on the back right here. So I'm pretty sure this symbol has to do with the military because this is military-based fantasy. This is also the book I'm reading for the Legacy Read Along with Life is Monet and Aaron from Booked and Busy. So it worked out. It worked out well, and we have this one. 
the second prompt is all hell breaks loose part two a book with supernatural being in it and i had to put this on my tbr because it was a book i really wanted to read specifically in october i bought it with october in mind to read this and it's going to be ninth house by labor Dizzle. this is her first adult novel and i am so excited to get into this i've heard mixed reviews there's a lot of trigger warnings for this book but trigger warnings don't bother me i feel like i'm one of those readers who can read anything and not be bothered they obviously will make me emotional but they don't bother me enough to not want to read the book um, I always go into a book with an open mindset so I'm excited for this this does have ghosts involved I know that the main character Alex can see ghosts and she also works at the ninth house inside of Ivy League school I believe it is oh Jesus what's the name of that school Yale University Yale University so um I am going to enjoy this because I have gone to Yale University multiple times I went to a pre uh, college prep school and my school was really big from the fifth grade on us going on college tours so I've been to several colleges between the ages of uh, the grades of fifth grade to 12th grade I've been on literally we would go to maybe about six or seven colleges a year so Yale University was definitely one of those colleges we did visit often so um we have this I'm super excited I don't I don't know a lot of people enjoyed it some people didn't but like I said I don't mind the uh trigger warnings I know that there's trigger warnings for drugs there's trigger warnings for I believe is sexual assault sexual abuse and things like that there's like a lot of dark trigger warnings they're on the screen you can, you can see them but i'm still excited to read this um i'm gonna go into this like i said with an open mindset and see what lay has to offer from this beautiful book all right the next prompt is going to be mystery spot it's a reread and for that i'm going with a soft read because i'm reading so many dark novels okay <laughs> the bride test by yeah the bride test by helen wong i thought it said the kiss quotient but i'm going with this book now I honestly prefer the Kiss Quotient, but the Bride Test actually was good for two prompts for this readathon. So I'm going with this. Um, and this basically is a contemporary romance following Kai Dyke, who has um, autism. He's on the spectrum for autism. And it also follows SMA, who is from Vietnam, but she comes to the States to sort of get into an arranged marriage with Kai Dyke. And it's their angsty romance. And it's so. <laughs> Helen Huang writes such phenomenal romances like phenomenal they are top tier for me they're just oh, they're so good um kai is not as possessive as michael was in um the kiss quotient which i still prefer the kiss quotient just because i love the dynamics between stella and michael and the possessiveness i was here for it but the angst in this book is just mm. I've read this book now maybe two or three times so this will be the third or fourth time that I'm reading this book and I love it I don't care um I did not like tab this book I think I annotated it did I no I didn't annotate sure didn't but um I'm still excited to read this I do own the first book as well I cannot wait for the next book to come out because I love I think his name is Quan I love Quan so much so I'm excited for that to come out but um we have the bride test all right, so then the fourth prompt is Yellow Fever, com comedy horror or comedy thriller. For that, I'm going to go with I Hate Fairyland. This is a comedy horror graphic novel, I think, about a young girl who gets stuck in Fairyland. And she's pretty much really, really old. She wants to get back home, but she's stuck there. I think that's what I heard. So we have that. Um, that's about it. The fifth prompt is Changing Channels, book to movie, TV show adaptation. Now, I have so many on my shelves, but I didn't want to read something too long. So I decided to go with the Net Galley arc, and it's going to be the Jungle Book manga. I have read the Jungle Book. I have seen the Jungle Book movies. I have seen play adaptations. I have seen so many versions of the Jungle Book. So why not just read the manga? So that's what I'm going to read. The sixth prompt is The French Mistake, read a sci-fi. For that, I'm going to go with The Sound of Stars by Alicia Dow. Um, like I said, it deals with an alien invasion. They take over New York City. They ban emotions. They ban books. They ban the arts. And it's between Ellie. Um, her name is Janelle, but they call her Ellie. And a alien named Morris. His name is not Morris. Uh, Maurice. I call him Maurice because the way his name is spelled, you can see on the screen, is kind of weird. So, yeah, there's aliens. Dystopian setting. I'm here for it. Sci-fi. All right, so prompt seven is Death's Door, a sad book. For that, I'm going to go with this graphic novel or graphic novel. Yeah, graphic novel. It's called Just So Happens by Fumio Obata. Um, I'm probably saying that name wrong. I apologize. But it's basically the story of this young lady. She's dealing with grief. She's dealing with pressure of not disappointing her dead parents and her identity. And obviously, it's going to be sad. It's going to be emotional. And she is not American. She is Asian. I don't know what kind of... Uh, she's from Tokyo. So, um it's dealing also with the rituals of death that they partake in in tokyo so i'm pretty sure this is going to make me cry and make me emotional and sad so it just so happens by fumio obata 
Okay, so part number eight is LARP and the Real Girl, and it's queer fantasy. For that, I'm going to go with Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. I have read Eleanor Park, I have read Fangirl, and I've read, I believe it's Landline. I believe, I, I read part of Landline and then DNF did. I will go back to it eventually, but um, I'm excited to go on to Carry On. I know that a lot of people rave about this book. They love this book. They didn't care for the sequel as much, but they did love this, and um, it's queer fantasy because they're gay. So I'm excited to read this book, finally. Okay, so prompt number nine is Dog Dean Afternoon. It's a book featuring an animal. For that, I'm going to go with the jungle book. Obviously, it takes place in the jungle. You have Baloo and all the other jungle animals. So, safe bet. Yeah. Okay, so ten is fan fiction, a fan fiction book. And for that, I'm going to go again with Carry On. This is fan fiction of Harry Potter. So, it just makes sense. Prompt 11 is Baby. Read a book with a vehicle on the cover and Baby is Dean's car. We all know this, but for that, I'm going to go again with the bride test. Um, there are airplanes on the cover. That's why I did not go with Kiss Quotient because I don't think Kiss Quotient had any um, like transportation on the cover. This one did. That's why I'm going with the bride test. So you have the little airplanes here, here, and just all throughout, even on the back of the book as well. And I think, yeah, on the spine too. So airplanes, motor transportation. It, it fits. Not as nice as Baby, of course, but it's it, it works. Prompt number 12 is Regarding Dean, a book featuring witches. For that, I'm going to go with this book, which I know some of you are loving. I know the sequel is out already. I was going to buy the sequel, but I want to wait to see how I feel about the first book. And it's going to be Serpent and Dove by Shelby Maharin. Um, this is YA fantasy. I'm actually going to say new adult fantasy. I think it's marketed as YA, but from what I've heard, it's really steamy. It's heavy on like some of the sex stuff. So I'm going to say new adult in my head, but um, it deals with a witch and a witch hunter and they accidentally have to get married and it's just their enemies to lovers romance. I heard it's really good. I know that, oh my God, I can't think of her name. I can't think of her name right now. It's early in the morning. I do not have all of my coffee in my system, so I apologize. But I'm going to put her name on the screen. I love her channel. I cannot think of her name right now. Naya. Oh my God. Naya Reads and Smile. Naya loves this book and the sequel. She did a reading vlog for, I believe, this book or definitely the sequel for a fact. Um, so yeah, Naya loves it and I'm excited to dive into this book. So 13 is Scooby Natural, a graphic novel. For that, I'm going to go with I Hate Fairyland or I can go with Just So Happens for that. But I'm going to go with I Hate Fairyland because it's a short read, so... Okay, so we have prompt number 14 is Lebanon, a book about family. For that, I'm going to go with this. It's Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. What I remember is that this is adult horror. It deals with a woman that when she was younger, her dad moved her and her family into a house. The house was haunted. Some supernatural things were happening. So he quickly moved them out, wrote a book about that house, and it sold, I guess, made millions or whatever. Um, as an adult, she decides she wants to go back to the house to see if things that were in the book were true. And pretty much the house starts to do exactly what the book said. So it's kind of like a dual timeline or dual formatted because it's told in present time and past time through the book um so yeah I want to read this it's about her and her family so yeah okay and the last prompt number 15 is carry on my wayward son the next in a series and for that I'm gonna go with desecration by Tim LaHaye and Jerry B Jenkins this is book nine of the left behind series there are 13 books total I cannot believe I'm going to be reading book nine it's really short not long at all these are easy to fly through. I read these within three days. I listen to the audiobook while reading. Um, I prefer to consume these with the audiobook because the audiobook just makes it a lot better. I'm like shocked that I'm on book nine. I do not have that many left to go. I have four more books to go before I'm done with the series. Like, that's insane. I did tell myself I wanted to finish this series before the end of the year, and I'm pretty much working on that. So I'm excited. And uh, yeah, we have Desecration. It says Antichrist takes the throne. So yeah we're excited for this i love the characters i love the cast of characters i love the action and the drama um this is a little violent so if you are this is marketed as christian sci fantasy so it does take place during the rapture the end times the seven year tribulation and things like that so if you are not big on that then um i would not suggest you read this i have been enjoying the series so far none of the books have gotten a five star I think one book got a 4.5, but most of them have gotten a four star rating, nothing lower than a four star rating. So I definitely would recommend the series. I know that there is a movie out about it, so I'm definitely going to check out the movie. And there are also three other series. There's a prequel trilogy, which I do own, which I will be reading. Um, there is a teens version of this as well. And I think there's another version of the Left Behind series as well. 
So, um, yeah, we have that, and I'm excited to get into this. So, those are going to be all my reads for the supernatural a thon As you can see, they coincide with the other read a thon So, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the next read a thon I'm doing is the shot a thon and this is only going to be a two week read a thon. It takes place from October 12th to the 25th, and it's hosted by Sophia from Sophia Thoughts. And I don't even know how I came across this, I think it was mentioned in the supernatural a thon discord and i was like i gotta take part in it because we love the first era of mistborn <laughs> we loved it so why not so i printed out the little printables um there's a bunch of printables for you to pr print out i just printed out the ones with the prompts so with this readathon you pick between either vin test tensoon or um Sazed, and they each have the eight prompts the eight prompts correlate to the metals and their powers so um I initially was going to go with Sazed because I like the prompts, but I ended up filling out all of the prompts for each of the um, characters, and Ven just seemed to suit me better. So, I'm going to go with Ven. This is the first round. Round one is Scadrio, and it's the first era, which is basically going to be Final Empire, um, the Well of Ascension, and the Hero of Ages with Ven, Sazed, Tensoon, and um, Ellen, and things like that. So I'm going with Ben. I have all of my books, my books picked, and of course, again, these books coincide with the books that are already on my TBR, which works out great. So the first prompt is Iron. It's a pull metal, and it's a new book. Now for this, I could have went with the new book that's on my shelf because I literally get review books sent to me every day, but I decided to go with the new book that I purchased, and for that, this is Legacy of Ashra Matthew Ward, military based fantasy, and I'm reading this for the Legacy read along with Life as Monet and um, Aaron from Mugs and Busy. So this is the newest book that I purchased. That's how I went with this prompt. So yeah. Prompt number two is Steel and it's Push Metal, a book that has been on your TBR for a while. And for that we have The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. This book has been on my TBR for a very, very, very long time. Very, very long time. So um, because I am already reading this for the Sunlight Archi Archive read-along, I figured why not just pop this in for that prompt. The third prompt is 10. Uh, heightened senses a book that will make you angry and for that i went with black leopard red wolf by marlon james now the reason why i say that is because i know that a lot of females have an issue with this book because of how marlon james refers to women in this book as well as uh sex and how over sexual sexualized this book is um i don't think it's going to be that big of an issue for me but um i know that there are going to be parts in this book that piss me off and make me angry so that's why i picked this book the fourth prompt is pewter increase physical powers in one sitting so basically read this book in one sitting and for that i'm going to go with i hit fairly in volume number one it's 126 pages i can definitely read this quickly so we're just going to go with that book um the fifth prompt right fifth is zinc in flames emotions a book with mental health themes and for that i'm gonna go with the sound of stars right the sound of stars by alicia dow and it definitely does have mental health rap it talks about anxiety and things like that so that's why i'm going with this book Prompt number six is brass. It says soothe emotions. Have a snack with your book. Um, I'm definitely going to be eating some ice cream out of a wine glass. I'm being that fancy. So um, I'm going to eat ice cream throughout the entire month of October just because. So that's what we're going to do. So the seventh prompt is copper. Hide powers. Uh, read a prompt from Ten Soon's list. So like I said, I did fill out all of the prompts. And from Ten Soon, I decided to do iron. And iron is strength, a book recommended by a friend. Um, and for that, I'm going to go with Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Morena Garcia. This has been recommended from a lot of booktubers and definitely from um, Aaron from Booked and Busy because this is a book club book read for the month of October. So we have Mexican Gothic. And the eighth and final prompt is Bronze is Hair Powers, an audiobook. And the audiobook I'm going to be listening to, honestly, I'm going to listen to an audiobook for all of these books. But the one specifically I'm going to be picking is The Will of Time by Robert Jordan because I know that this is going to be... A hefty hefty read um this is going to be a new fantasy world and i tend i can read multiple fantasies at a time but in order for me to really be engrossed in the world i have to listen to the audiobook to get a feel of the atmosphere and things like that so i'm going to listen to the audiobook for this because this is a brand new world this is kind of like a fantasy classic this book is about 800 pages long um and i'm, I'm just excited to get into it so i'm going to listen to the audiobook for the world of time so those are all of my books for the Shadowthon. All the information, like I said, is down below if you're interested. So let's move on to the next readathon. Okay, so the next readathon is the Shadowthon. 
here shall i got that and this goes from october 19th to november 14th so you have the last two weeks of october and the last the first two weeks of um november so the first six books i mentioned are going to be for the october books and then the last four books that i mentioned are going to be for my november books so i'm going to share them all with you guys but i'm going to let you know which ones are specifically going to be for november um this i found out through also the discord for the supernatural thon because somebody posted in it and i love sherlock holmes i have watched every single movie every single tv show i have not i just recently started reading the books i believe about two two months ago or so um so i am like excited for this because i love sherlock holmes so much um you can go on the website the links are down below um there's a whole bunch of information about the schedule the book for winters there's a competition there are prompts and i decided i printed out everything wrote down the books that i'm going to be doing for each of the prompts and um for this round they are focusing on poc rep so they want us to read own voices authors poc black authors and things like that i tried to do as much as i could with poc rep but um it didn't really work out the best so some of my books are poc some of them are not but um we're gonna just jump in so the first prompt is retelling and it's read a diverse retelling by an own voices author for that i'm gonna go with a dream so dark by l uh, mckinney i know that the entire trilogy follows the alice in wonderland series i don't remember the second book for alice in wonderland so this is a retelling of this alice in wonderland book here so we have this and this follows alice after the events of what happened in a blade so back i can't really discuss it any further but we have it the next prompt is the stout inspector bradstreet and it's read a book with more than 500 pages now obviously i have the way of kings i have legacy of ash i have the eye of the world we have lots of books but i'm gonna go with black leopard red wolf by marlon james this book clocks in at about 618 or so pages or yes yeah, about 1620 pages so 620 pages excuse me so we have this book the next prompt i'm going to probably say it wrong i apologize is the sedentary um and it's mycroft homes read any book only in one room so read it only in your bedroom your office wherever um for that i'm going to go with the eye of the world by robert jordan i'm just going to read this in my room i'm not going to take this out the house with me i'm not going to sit outside and read this i'm not going to go in the kitchen i'm not going to go in the living room i'm going to specifically read this book in my bedroom either on my computer chair or my uh, regular chair or on my bed it's going to be read in my room the next prompt is the cable inspector gregson read a book you hope to learn something from and the examples they gave are a book written by an author of a different nationality a non-fiction book or a religious text for that i'm going to go with a non-fiction that i actually started maybe two months ago and never freaking finished at all like i've been trying to finish this book but my mind has been elsewhere and it's resuscitating evangelism by jordan and ernest easley this is all about evangelism evangelizing the gospel and things like that i have read about two three chapters so far and thoroughly enjoying this this is only eight chapters long so you can read this in eight days but because it's so meaty i am taking my time with it um i'm thoroughly enjoying it i love everything that is being told in this book and um things like that if you guys don't know i am an ordained evangelist at my church but it's just not about you being an evangelist it's about every human on earth evangelizing the gospel and sharing the gospel and why we should share it and how we can share it and things like that so i'm thoroughly enjoying this book and i want to finish this book and move on to another book already so we have this book the next prompt is the woman irene adler and it's to read a book written by a woman for that i'm gonna go with mexican gothic by sylvia morena garcia because i loved uh, gods of jade and shadow and i want to read this book and i'm going to read this book so she's a woman author we're gonna go with it the next one is the nemesis professor james moriarty read a book with enemies literally every single one of these books have enemies but i'm going to go with brandon sanderson the way of kings because there are just enemies all throughout this book every character seems to have some type of enemy literally so um i'm gonna go with the way of kings by brandon sanderson so these last four prompts are gonna be prompts that i'm not gonna tackle in october these are gonna be my my november reads but i'm still gonna share it anyway because it's part of the sherlock -athon. so the first one is going to be the scott mrs hudson read a book by a scottish author or set in scotland i know that they had the outlander series but i don't want to start that series yet because i want physical copies so I don't have visible copies and I don't want to sell it right now. So I decided to just pick up my Sherlock Holmes collection. I'm going to be reading three um, of the Sherlock Holmes adventures out of here. So the first one is going to be the Red Headed League. The Red Headed League by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle in this book. So I'm going to go with that book here. 
The next prompt is The Plagiarist, Inspector Lestrade, and it's read a book that is ghost written or written under a pen name. They gave a bunch of different um, authors. They had Robin Hobb, which I didn't know Robin Hobb was not her name. I didn't know that that was a, that was a pen name. Um, but the author that they had on here was Cassandra Clare, and I have been meaning to restart her entire Shadowhunters World books over. I have read the entire, entire Mortal Instruments. I have read Lady Midnight. I have also read the first two books in the Infernal Devices um trilogy but i've never like completed the entire series so i decided to start over again and so for that i'm going to be going with the city of bones by um cassandra claire cassandra claire is not her name i can't remember whose video it was i think it was um tabitha i think that's I, I i can't remember her channel i think her name is tabitha though the channel name is on the screen i think she was the video i watched where she mentioned that um cassandra claire was not her actual name it was her pen name so i'll put cassandra's claire's like real name if i can find it on the screen but cassandra claire is a pen name and so we're gonna read city of bones i absolutely adored all the books i think i gave all the books in the Mortal instruments five stars of course i read this when it first came out teen years i'm um, not teen years per se but i was younger i am 29 for those of you who don't know i'm almost pushing 30 Whew. but um yeah i'm going to reread it i adore the books i adored the movie when it came out i was a fan of the movie i thought the movie was great when it came out and then i loved the tv show i think i've only watched like three seasons of the show i never finished it so i need to rewatch the series but um i definitely want to start my reread so i guess i'll be starting my reread of this entire shadow hunters world in um november so we have this book the next prompt is the narrator dr john watson a book with a narrator um and for that i could have went with nevernight but I don't want to go with Nevernight. I have read Nevernight and I also read the second book. I just haven't read Doctor On. I don't, I'm just, I don't know why I'm not reading Doctor On yet. But I'm going to go with, like I said, another, another Sherlock Holmes. And I'm going to go with A Case of Identity from Sherlock Holmes Adventures. The last prompt is a consulting detective, Sherlock Holmes. Read a book with a detective and obviously Sherlock Holmes is a detective. So I'm reading another one. The name of the book is called uh, Boscomp. Boscombe Valley Mystery. I'm probably saying it wrong. I apologize. But the title is on the screen. But again, it's another one of those short stories inside of here. So we're going with that. Yeah, I'm excited to be partaking in the Sherlockathon. I love Sherlock Holmes. So we're great on that. So let's move on to the next readathon. Okay, so the next readathon is the Latin Exathon. So I know that the Latin Exathon was only a 10 day readathon for the month of um september but it does the latin heritage month does expand into october so it's really not the readathon but i know that there's like a bingo board the latinx bingo board i'm not gonna really like follow the bingo board but i am extending my personal like readathon to october um i can't remember the date but i'll put the date on the screen so that'll be the last day of like the latinx heritage month so i'm gonna read up until then and i do have five books that I want to read. So of course the first one is going to be Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Obviously this is the book club for the Busy Bee Book Club as well as the Crusty Book Club with Chanel from Chanel Time. So we have this. I also want to get into her other two books which are The Beautiful. This is historical fantasy. I think historical fantasy. Um, and then the other one is going to be Certain Dark Things which this is um, I believe it's historical fantasy but it also has vampires in it so i definitely want to read those three from sylvia Moreno garcia because i have adored her first book that i read which was um of gods of Sh gods of jade and shadow i love that book gave a 4.5 star rating so i want to read more from her um and i have three other books two other books sorry i have you had me at ola by alexis daria and this just sounds like it's going to be amazing it's kind of like a telenovela but in book form and i'm like so excited to read it so excited i'm thinking about getting a physical copy of this book um to own but i also want to read um what is it called dear haiti love elaine by what is it called M M mika micah and maritza and i don't know how to say their names i apologize it's on the cover but um i'm going to read that because haiti is a part of uh the Hispa hispanic heritage so i want to give that book a go but yeah that are uh, those are the five books that i want to read for that um so let's move on to becca's bookopoly so for the month of october i definitely wanted to play becca's bookopolathon again i love becca's bookopoly i think it's so fun but i'm just i don't have the patience to make my own board um and she created this board specifically for the bookopolathon and i figured i would just use it again every month because it's so cute and it's just it's just really cute look at the board look look at the board it's so cute and so 
I decided to do five more rows. Obviously, if I got a double, I would roll again. So I ended up with six rows. But we are going to jump into the rows now. So before I was using this uh, Paw Patrol Sky um, little toy that I got from my son, I'm actually using now this Shopkins little star that he got me. So last place was Foiled's cover. We have it there. I have my two die here. And I'm going to put them in here because I don't want them to roll all over the place and mess my setup. So we're going to go with the first row. Five. If you guys can see three and two. So that is five. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five. That is PLC rep, and it works because I have some PLC books on my TBR. So let's go talk about that. Okay, so for the first row, I landed on um, PLC rep because I got a five. And for PLC rep, which is person of color rep, I have about six books. Six books. So uh, I literally have options. Here are the five <laughs> right here. Plus, um, I have The Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste. So any of those books will work for PLC Rep. So we, like I said, we have The Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste. We have Black Leopard Red Wolf by Marla James. A Dream So Dark by L.L. McKinney. The 100,000 Kingdoms by N.K. Jemison. I also have The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemison. And then lastly, we have The Sound of Stars by Alicia Dow. And I hope I'm saying her, last, her first name right apologize if i'm not but we have those books those are plc rep books um obviously i have other plc reps but when i think of plc rep i'm thinking black because i am black so um i'm thinking of books written by black authors so those are my options second row seven one two three four five six seven oh becca's book wreck ah! Okay, I know what book I'm going to include. It's not on my TBR, but I know which book I'm going to go and pick. So let's go see what that book is. Okay, so roll number two. Got a seven, which landed me on Becca's Wreck. And for that, I'm going to go with Fortuna Swan. I think that's how you say that, Fortuna Swan. Um, and it's written by KJ Sutton. Becca has been raving nonstop about that book on her channel. And it's just intrigued me. I downloaded the first two books. I believe it's going to be a trilogy. Um, but I downloaded the first two books. And I cannot wait to dive into this and just get my thoughts and opinions out there. I know that it's angsty, it's steamy, it's fairies. And we're here for it. So we have that book. Row number three. darn it double two i mean double one so i have two which is a chance and hopefully this works out chance is ninth house great ninth house is actually on my tbr for the month so that works out yes for me so let's go talk about that book real quick okay so row number three just had to be the one with the double of course um so i got double one which was a two and that landed me on a chance card but luckily chance was nice to me and chance was a book already on my tbr and that's ninth house by leigh Duo. so we are here for it thank you becca's book Athlon, for making this you know a good game for me thank you so because i rolled a double i'm gonna have to add a sixth row so this is going to be my fourth row six one, two, three, four, five, six. A sad book. I have something for that. So let's go talk about that. Row number four, I got six and I landed on Read a Sad Book. So for that, I'm going to go with Just So Happens by Fumio Obata, which is a graphic novel following a young girl from Tokyo. Um, she, I believe, lives in the States and she goes back to Tokyo. If I'm not mistaken, she goes back to Tokyo to deal with the death of her father. So it deals with death, grief, and um, self-identity and things like that. And it's going to be sad, of course, because this also talks about the Tokyo death rituals or something like that that they have to do so i'm excited to dive into this it's going to be a quick read not too long graphic novel of course so i'm excited row number five that is ten yes one two three four five six seven eight ah, nine ten great okay let me just double check that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes. Okay. So I do know what my latest purchase was, and it is on my TBR, and it's a part of a read along. So let's go talk about that book. Row number five, I got ten, and I landed on most recent purchase, which works out again. I I I love when all of the t like the, all of the readathon prompts can coincide. <laughs> we love to see it. But um, my most recent purchase, like I said previously, is Legacy of Ash by um, Matthew Ward. So we're gonna go with this. This works because this is the book for the Legacy read along with uh, Life as Monet and Aaron from Booked and Busy. So we have this military based fantasy, and that's all I know. Okay, and then the sixth and final row, if this is not a double, is five. One, two, three, four, 
but yes yeah, small book and i do have a book for that so it seems like all of my rolls except for one worked out to my tbr I already have so let's go finish up this video with my tbr for the month roll number six the final roll i got a five and that landed me on small book under 300 which works out great because i'm going to read yet again i hit fairyland by this author here volume one on my phone it comes in at 126 pages i'm not really sure how many pages the book is i know that it's less than 300 stuff 300 pages though so we have this graphic novel and i'm excited to read it so that is it for my october tbr it seems like a lot about 25 books 18 books physical and then seven books ebook um if i add in the, the diviners that'll be 19 physical books and then seven ebooks i definitely can read through all of my physical books i want to try to prioritize my physical books more than anything um the graphic novels and mangas i can definitely fly through in a day um of course they're quick eat quick eat quick and easy reads but um yeah that is it you guys for my october tbr i'm excited for all of these books i cannot wait to read all these books and hopefully i can get through all of the physical books on my shelf um obviously not including city of bones and the uh books from the sherlock holmes collection because those books will be read in november of course for the sherlockathon but um i pretty much well if i don't count those books then i actually don't have 25 books i actually have 23 because those two books are for november so i have 23 books and if i include the divine that's 24 so i definitely can do this i, I can definitely do this I, I have high hopes i'm determined to complete all these readathons like i said i did write all of my reading plans here so that when i go to do my reading journal i can easily put that in there but um yeah that is it what are you guys reading for the month of october if you guys have read any of these books let me know i would love to hear your thoughts see your videos see your book reviews and things like that and um that is pretty much it for this video so i'm gonna go put some more coffee in my system so i'll catch you guys in the next one bye